Our Heavenly Father, our prayer this uh, moment is that uh, you may reign supreme, thanking you for the blessings of the week and the Sabbath that has drawn nigh. I pray that, Lord, you may set us apart for thy holy work and uh, you may forgive us our many iniquities and reconcile us unto thyself with the blood of thy Son. And as we look at this uh, important issue of the unmatched work of a mother, Lord, help us to recognize what we are talking about in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, happy Sabbath, uh, everyone, wherever you are tuning in and wherever you're watching. And those who will come across uh, this uh, presentation. This is a uh, sermon with the with the gospel sound as rekindling the reformation, bringing you the sessions on uh, family life. And uh, it is always my prayer that uh, the Lord God may work uh, in our lives in uh, a mighty way that uh, we have never imagined of because the word of God tells us that he is willing to do more exceedingly abundantly than we may think or ask of him. And I pray that these sessions may not be just information, but uh, a reformation that will be done amongst us to reconcile us back to God through our family relationships. And so I want to just look at uh, the great work of our mother. I have just uh, uh, say that the title is The Unmatched Work of a Mother. Perhaps somebody who is so unappreciated in this world is a mother. And maybe the reason this has been is because people have assumed motherhood without uh, looking into the real meaning of being a mother. And so you have found that things have been messed up and things have happened which um, should have never happened uh, because of uh, the abuse that has been brought into this uh, office of a uh, uh, mother. And so uh, I just want us to be encouraged as we go through uh, this important uh, office. And when we talk about the unmatched work of a mother, it doesn't mean that uh, this mother will be doing the work and uh, the husband is just seated uh, and uh, just watching things happen. In fact, uh, I would like to suggest something. And uh, I pray that the Lord may guide me to get it quickly. A mother, what uh, she should uh, be trying to do. That uh, if all mothers will uh, do whatever that we are we are going to talk about, they'll find themselves raising up families uh, in a way that uh, will be pleasing to the Lord. And so uh, I'd just like to place something on board for the beginning, some thought that came to me. First of all, I'll start with this in solemn appeal before I go to any other one. And uh, every woman about to become a mother, whatever may be her surroundings, should encourage constantly a happy, cheerful, contented disposition, knowing that for all her efforts in this direction, she will be repaid tenfold in the physical as well as the moral uh, character of her offspring. Nor is this all. She can by habit accustom herself to cheerful thinking, and thus encourage a happy state of mind and cast a cheerful reflection of her own happiness of spirit upon her family. 
and those whom she associates and in a very great degree will her physical health be improved a force will be imparted to the life springs the blood will not move sluggishly as would be the case if she were to yield to despondent and gloom her mental and moral health are invigorated by the buoyance of her spirits the power of the will can resist impressions of the mind and will prove a grand suit of the nerves children who are robbed of that vitality which they should have inherited of their parents should have the utmost care by those by close attention the loss of their being uh, a much better condition of things can be established the period during which the infant receives its nourishment from the mother is a critical one many mothers while nursing their infants have been permitted to over labor and to heat their blood in cooking and the nursling has been seriously affected not only with favored nourishment from the mother's breast but it is blood has been poisoned by the unhealthy diet of the mother which uh, has favored, favored her whole system, thereby affecting the food of the infant. The infant will also be affected by the condition of the mother's mind. If she is unhappy, easily agitated, irritable, giving vent to outbursts of passion, the nourishment the infant received from its mother will be inflamed, often producing colic, spasms, and in some instances, causing convulsions and fits. Now, that is... Uh, a condition that has to be looked in when uh, somebody is preparing uh, for to become a parent. And as I said, mothers are not appreciated so much. And we are told in Ministry of Healing, page 376, paragraph 2, the mother's work often seems to have an important service. It is a work that is rarely appreciated. Mothers know little of her many cares and burdens. Her days are occupied with a round of little duties, all calling for patient effort, for self-control, for tact, wisdom, and self-sacrificing love. Yet she cannot boast of what she has done as any great achievement. She has only kept things in the home running smoothly. Often weary and perplexed, she has tried to speak kindly to the children, to keep them busy and happy, and to guide the little feet in the right path. She feels that she has accomplished nothing, but it is not so. Heavenly angels with the care worn mother, noting the burdens she carries day by day. Her name may not have been heard in the world, but it is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So mothers are so unappreciated, but um, also um, there's one more Uh, this is what I wanted to tell the fathers as uh, we start this presentation. This is what I was looking for. And uh, I hope that we'll be blessed by it. A woman does herself and her family a serious wrong when she does her work and theirs too. When she brings the wood and water and even takes the axe to prepare the wood. While her husband and son sit about the fire having a social easy time. God never designed that wives and mothers should be slaves to their families. Many, a mother is overburdened with care while her children are not educated to share the domestic burdens. As the result, she grows old and dies prematurely, leaving her children just when a mother is most needed to guide their inexperienced feet. Who is to blame? Husband should do all they can to save the wife, care and keep her spirit cheerful. Never should idleness be fostered or permitted in children, for it soon becomes a habit. When not engaged in useful employment, the faculties either depreciate or become active in evil work. What do you need, my brother? What you need, my brother, is active exercise. Every feature of your countenance, every faculty of your mind is indicative of this. You do not love hard work nor to earn your bread by the sweat of thy brow, but this is God's ordained plan in the economy of life and so we are told that um, uh, mothers should never do the work that the husband and the sons are supposed to be doing mothers should never do a work that um, the sons and the husbands are supposed to be doing otherwise she will die prematurely while the children are in the stage they need their mother most so let us go to this uh, uh the and much to work of a mother. The 
unmatched work of uh, a mother and uh, I'll bring this to our screen so that uh, we may be able to share to together. We are told in this unmatched work of a mother, the mother is, a, is God's <clears throat> agent to Christianize her family. She is to exemplify biblical religion, showing how it influences, how its influence is to control us in, it, in its everyday duties and pleasures teaching her children that by grace alone can they be saved through faith, which is the gift of God. This constant teaching as to what Christ is to us and to them, his love, his goodness, his mercy, revealing the great plan of redemption will make a hallowed sacred embrace on the heart. So the mother is God's agent to Christianize her family. And we shall see later that the mother's work is to Christianize the nation. As you faithfully do your work, mother, in the home, the father as a priest of the household, um, the mother as a home missionary, you are multiplying agencies for doing good outside the home. As you improve your own powers, you are becoming better fitted to labor in the church and in the neighborhood. So a mother who is working as a home missionary is fitting herself for the labor in the church and the labor in the neighborhood. By binding your children to yourself and to God, fathers and mothers and children become laborers together with God. This is Testament Treasures, Volume 3, page 106, paragraph 3. And the previous quote was Adventist Home, page 235, paragraph 2. No work is greater or holier than that of a mother. Listen, if, a married, if married men go into the work, leaving their wives to care for the children at home, the wife and mother is doing fully as great and important a work as the husband and father. Although one is in the missionary field, the other is a home missionary whose cares and anxieties and burdens frequently far exceed those of the husband and father. Can you imagine that? That the father in the field cannot do a work that can match of a mother who is a faithful home missionary taking care of the children, the arranging of the house, the cooking, the washing of the utensils, the washing of uh, the clothing. No father is greater in the field than the wife at home doing faithfully her work. Her work is a solemn and uh, important one. The husband in the open mission field may receive the honors of men, while the home toiler may receive no earthly credit for her labor but if she works for the best interest of her family seeking to fashion their characters after the divine model the recording angel writes her name as one of the greatest missionaries in the world god does not see things as man's finite vision views them and uh, you know uh, it has been uh, a very difficult situation and uh, it has been uh, uh, something that is really uh, wanting uh, an address uh, because um, many fathers do not appreciate uh, their wives, many husbands do not appreciate their wives. And uh, women do not love to be called uh, housewives because the name housewife has been thought to be a degrading uh, a degrading uh, uh, a title to uh, to 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 women actually because no one has ever taught them what actually the why the word uh, um the word uh, uh, housewife uh, uh, means but uh, if they will be taught diligently what it means to be a housewife, that is uh, 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 making a home suitable for the angels to dwell there in, then uh, they will take uh, they will take their duties uh, cheerfully, knowing that they are not just working for human beings, but uh, they are working for the Lord of Heaven in all that um, they, they are doing. And so um, 
let mothers be taught what actually it means to be uh, a mother and then uh, uh, they'll take their, their their work carefully doing that which uh, actually pleases uh, the lord that which pleases the lord and uh, being uh, a housewife does not mean that uh, you are not educated being a housewife does not mean that uh, you are not educated in fact this is the highest university that you can ever be in being a housewife because you do not only run the affairs of the home but we are told that the work of the mother is to christianize the whole nation you are running a house where actually people lives to go and make the laws of a nation I want you mothers to be uh, 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 to be educated on this issue of being a housewife. It doesn't just mean that uh, you are a woman who is married and your work is to wash clothes, your work is to sweep the floor, um, and your work is just to look at the kitchen garden, and your work is to make sure that the children are not dirty. That is not the issue of... Uh, this is just a little part of being... Uh, a, a, a housewife but uh, a housewife comprehends what actually the whole nation shall be how your children will interact with people outside there how your husband will interact with the people there how the name of the home will be uh, uh, looked upon outside there it comprehends the whole uh, life of uh, 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 representing christ in uh, in the whole uh, Christendom. And so let not mothers think that um, the title housewife, actually, it is a degrading one. It has been degraded because people has reduced it into being a house girl or uh, a maid in the home. But uh, if we will get the terms correct and uh, educate these women to what it means to be a housewife, then uh, it is a name that will carry with it the import that it should carry with. And so in uh, Testimonies to Sexual Behavior, page 46, paragraph 2, God does not call mothers away from home missionary work, which will leave their children under the control of influences that are demoralizing and ruinous to the soul. Are not her children in need of missionary labor? Are not her children worth earnest and prayerful effort? Shall she neglect home mission work for a larger field? Let her try her skill in her own home. Take up her appointed God-given work. This is not a work given by your husband. This is not a work given by the church. This is not a work given by the neighborhood. This is a God-given work. If she has utterly failed, let her not be discouraged. If she has utterly failed, it is because she has not had faith or many have not presented the truth and lived the truth as it is in Jesus. Let her, after years of apparent failure, try again other methods seeking counsel from of God. Present his promises on your knees before him. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberal, liberal and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith and Nothing wavering, James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And so many are women in their trials and uh, in their trying to take up uh, uh, the work that uh, the Lord has given to them. They, um, they sometimes feel the burden and... Uh, sometimes seem to fail in this work. But we are told that if they have tried, even if it is a hundred times, let them redo it again, seeking the counsel of the Lord and not give up. And uh, the people who are associating with her should encourage her instead of uh, really discouraging her. Continued on. We must come back to our point, which is not to urge you all to give, yourselves to mission work this is mothers but to serve god more in connection with your daily calling i have heard that a woman who has who has a mission makes a poor wife or a bad mother this is very possible and at the same time very lamentable but the mission i urge is not at all of this sort 
dirty rooms, slantingly gowns, children with unwashed faces are a swift witness against the sincerity of those who keep other vineyards and neglect their own. So if you are neglecting to do this God-given work, you are keeping others' vineyards and neglecting your own. And continued on, and this is Sister White quoting Spurgeon in uh, Home uh, Healthful Reformer, July 1, 1873. She says, I have no faith in that woman who talks of grace and glory abroad and uses no soap and water at home. Let the buttons be on the shirts, let the children's socks be mended, let the house be as neat as a new pin, and the home be as happy as home can be. Serve God by doing common actions in a heavenly spirit. And then if your daily calling only leaves you cracks and crevices of time, fill them up with holy service. And uh, these um, round jobs that the women do at in the house, they build up character that they instill in the children and in their husbands. And so let them do this work in uh, a manner that um, will uh, glorify God and without actually murmuring about um, uh, anything, without murmuring uh, uh, in uh, the work that uh, they, they are doing. Let them do it cheerfully and let them know that the Lord is um, watching over them to give them the strength to be able to accomplish that uh, which cultivates patience in them. And this patience, while practiced in home duties, will be transferred in patience to the children, to the husbands, and, lead, and uh, dealing uh, with the problem that uh, may arise in the, in, the, in the family. Going on, we read, still quoting, is Sister White quoting, uh, talking about um, uh, the home missionary. I am delighted to find the following in that invaluable work entitled The Young Ladies Counselor by Reverend Daniel Wise e AM. It can be obtained at any Methodist book uh, rooms. She says, permit me, and this is still quoting Spurgeon, and uh, this is by the quoting uh, Reverend Daniel Wise, and uh, you can wonder how Sister White was able to quote Spurgeon, Reverend uh, Daniel Weiss and other uh, and Adventist authors because they had uh, been directed by God to write these things that they wrote. Quoting in Health for Reformer, she says, permit me by the way of illustrating another feature of this question to lead you into the sitting room of a respectable and pious lady. You see how she's called respectable and pious lady. And how is she known that she is respectable and pious lady? Her what? her sitting room illustrates that fact. So if somebody, and hold on, ladies, if somebody enters your sitting room without even speaking to them, they should be able to recognize you are a respectful and a pious lady. Who is a pious lady? A lady who knows scriptures and practices them. This is piousness. And it doesn't mean that in your sitting room, you are hanging scriptures and all that stuff for some, somebody to say, oh, this lady is respectful, respectable, and this lady is pious. Let us hear what it means to be a respectable and pious lady, somebody who knows the scripture and practices them. So permit me by way of illustrating another feature of this question to lead you into the sitting room of a respectable and pious lady. She is neatly but plainly attired and is busy. She is not a busy body. She is busy. With the aid of a servant dusting and cleaning the room, the doorbell rings and the girl hastens to see who is the visitor. She finds the lady's pastor at the door and without ceremony ushers him into the sitting room. I love this until I highlighted it with yellow. Without ceremony. There are people who have ceremonies just welcoming a visitor is a ceremony on its own and uh, this should be shunned because um, uh, we are told that um, uh, ladies you don't have to cultivate familiarity with ministers 
ladies don't cultivate familiarity with ministers and also men should not cultivate familiarity with the women. So without ceremony, ushers him into the sitting room. That is her pastor. The lady's face is suffused with blushes as she confusedly lays aside her dusting brush and offers her hand to the minister saying, Sir, I am ashamed you should let Christ, you should, I, sir, I am ashamed you should let, sorry, I'll read again. The lady's face is suffused with blushes as she confusedly lays aside her dusting brush and offers her hand to the minister, saying, Sir, I am ashamed you should find me thus. Uh, the minister, let Christ, when he cometh, find me so doing, replies her pastor. What, sir, do you wish to be found in this employment? Honestly inquired the astonished lady. Yes, madam, I wish to be found faithfully performing the duties of my mission as I have found you fulfilling yours. So this is a pastor in the field missionary work. This is a wife in the home missionary work. And each one is accounted faithful and ushered in the kingdom of God when they are found doing their duty faithfully and fulfilling them. And was not the minister right? He recognized a great but a despised truth. He saw a high, as high a moral importance in the humble task of the lady as in the mission of Gabriel to the ancient prophets. For both did the will of God in their respective spheres. And diversity of sphere does not necessarily involve real inferiority in the employment. Now, let those words sing in. As God sends a message to a prophet through Gabriel. So God helps the woman to illustrate what is Christianity in her home. And the mission of Gabriel to deliver a message to, prophet, to the prophet is no much important than the work of a mother doing her work faithfully at home to keep the sitting room neat. And by the way, why should she even keep the sitting room neat? And why is that work more or uh, uh, um, as important as the work of Angel Gabriel? Look here. And your Gabriel, for example, is sent to my home to give me a message to the church. Do you know if he comes to my home and the sitting room is dirty, he may not enter in that house. Remember what God told the Israelites, keep your camps holy because I walk amongst you. And uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. You remember that phrase. And so here is Angel Gabriel carrying a message of weight to a teacher of the word of God, a prophet, an evangelist, a deacon, an elder in the church, and he's coming swiftly from heaven. I have this message for you to deliver to your church. I have this letter for you to deliver to the church of Sardis, to the church of Ephesus to deliver to the church of Theatera, to deliver to the church of Pagamos. He comes swiftly. The message from the Father to the Son, to the angel, and to the messenger that will be delivering the, work, the, the message. And he comes to your household. And what does he find? A cup of porridge there in the floor. There is the children waste on the chair. We have a dustbin just at uh, the doorstep. W what do you think of Angel Gabriel? He is not welcomed in that home at all. The woman is illustrating in that house. He cares about nothing about salvation or things. And he will just bypass the house and go to another server. And so the work of a mother and the work of the angel are having weightier work, uh, 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 responsibilities. I mean that uh, you cannot say that the work of the angel Gabriel is more important than the work of the mother. I'm not uh, uh, really belittling the work of the angels. They have weightier matters to bring to the children of God. But if he doesn't find the environment uh, suitable for uh, representing heaven,
because he, Angel Gabriel will come with the message and you have to take it to the church and people will wonder, how is this man delivering a message when even his own household is in a such and such a state? We are told that uh, it degrades the message that uh, the man is giving to the church when he cannot keep uh, uh, or he cannot practice the same message uh, in, his, uh, in his household. Like, uh, let us say that uh, Angel Gabriel is bringing the message of uh, dress reform to somebody in the church who doesn't understand dress reform, or um, he wants to bring about the message of health reform to a certain family who doesn't understand this. And he's coming to deliver this message through the servant of the Lord. And when he comes at the home, he finds people, a house which is of dirty laundry, a home where actually food is prepared in a scanty way. What do you think? Will this message have an impact to the church when the mother has failed to do her work faithfully at the home? I have belabored on this point so that you may understand what it means that uh, the work of a home missionary is just as the same as the work of a field missionary. And even the home missionary is so more important uh, we are told that the work of the father in the mission cannot match the work of a mother at home. But let us continue and see what we have here. Um, just because your sphere is different from the other sphere, it does not necessarily involve real inferiority in the employment. The lady in her home could exhibit an affection as true and an obedient as sincere as the angel in his sphere. It will be difficult to show where in her employment was morally and necessarily inferior to his, that is Angel Gabriel, inasmuch as the character of an act derives all its moral greatness, not from the sphere of the actor, but from the conformity of the will of God. So here, it is not per se the office that is much holier and great, but what is great in these spheres is the carrying out of the will of God. You can call yourself a prophet, but if you are not accomplishing the office of the prophet or the will of the prophets in that office, then it cannot be a greater work. You cannot say you are a mother just being having pregnancy nine months and bringing some life in this earth does not make you a mother does not make you a very important person in that office. But the carrying out of the will in that office is what is the greatest thing. And so if angels fail in their duty, it doesn't matter if they have uh, another nature higher than the nature of human beings. It counts to nothing. A human being who is flesh and blood, when he carries out the will of God, is of much importance than the angels who never kept their first estate and they were thrown out even though they have a higher nature than that of a human being. I hope that we understand that point and uh, uh, I believe that I have not done disservice to the office of the angels. Continued on, do you perceive the bearing of my illustration upon the question of woman's fear? It shows you that your sex is not necessarily inferior to the other because it is called by God and nature to act in a different sphere. Your exclusion from the stage of public life does not imply your inferiority. Only the diversity of your powers, functions, and duties. Indeed, it will defy the loftiest powers to show where in the work the mission of the sphere of a woman is a wit beneath that of her more bustling and prominent companion man. And so um, we go outside there, some of us who are teachers of the word of God or uh, involve ourselves in uh, field uh, work. And, uh, and I'm sorry to say, sometimes you may hear praises after praises being given to men, not because they have sought it, or not because they are entertaining it, but as it is in the nature of human beings, you, you, you will hear something like, oh, Sam, you are doing a great work. Yes, I'm doing a great work, but there's somebody who is keeping me in good health. I know it's God who keeps us in good health. That one I understand. But there is a person who makes sure that the food that is on the table is clean. 
The clothes are ironed. The hair is in good shape and bids you God speed as you leave the door to go and do this work. That woman will never be told uh, you your wife is doing a great job. Rarely do you hear such a thing. You'll just hear, oh, Sammy, this is a great work that you are doing. But um, here you have a woman who has allowed you maybe to sit before a computer, prepare materials, print them out without saying a word, but providing food and all this, giving you a humble time, not making noise so that um, your mind may be clear to be able to bring down the message of God in a rightful way, to put it on a booklet or a, on a leaflet to be able to uh, send it out. This woman will never be appreciated. And uh, I'm sorry to at this point to interject uh, myself and say that uh, even when uh, the, these ministers receive their salaries, they do not care that they have a wife to set aside her money and give her so that they, she may be able to spend the way that uh, she pleases without being asked. Yesterday, I gave you 100 shillings. How did you spend it? The other day, I gave you 200. How did you spend it? That, that, that is not actually the husband fulfilling his mission, by the way. We are told that, uh, and I'll just, uh, I said, interject myself and put something on the screen, which is of more important, Adventist home, uh, this is more important. In Adventist homepage 378, I keep repeating this and I'll repeat it until it makes sense to all of us as ministers. This is uh, what uh, I'm trying to say. Adventist home. Wife's allowance for personal use. You must help each other. Do not look upon it as a virtue to hold fast the past strings, refusing to give your wife money. You should allow your wife a certain sum weekly, and those who do not get weekly but get monthly, we can change it to monthly. You should allow your wife a certain sum monthly and should let her do what she please with this money. You have not given her opportunity to exercise her tact or her taste because you have not a proper realization of the position that a wife should occupy. Your wife has an excellent and well-balanced mind. And give your wife a share of the money that you receive. Let her have this as her own and let her use it as she desires. She should have been allowed to use the means that she earned as she, uh, she her judgment deemed best. If she had had a certain sum to use as her own without being criticized, a great weight would have been lifted from her mind. And so while women go outside there and minister and uh, maybe even people give us appreciation, you go someplace and this has happened many times to ministers. We go to labor and uh, we go outside there one week, two weeks, one month, and uh, maybe it's in a household, it's in the field, and the people of that village or the household that you are dealing in says, Minister, uh, I'm not paying you for what you have done. I just want, I'm moved by the Lord to appreciate the work that you are doing. And he carries out um, maybe $100, $200, and gives you, tell you, please, uh, this is yours. And, uh, I'm not giving you as a tithe, I'm not giving you as an offering, just an appreciation for leaving your family and coming here. You know, this is not your money, brothers and sisters. It is your money and your wife who allowed you to leave home. If she could have started noise, you are not leaving home. Would you have gone? And if you could have gone, with whose bidding would you have gone? With whose prayers would you have gone? In fact, you are told in First Peter that... Uh, uh, live wisely with the women so that your prayers may not be hindered. And so if um, she doesn't allow you to live or uh, if you leave her and treat her like a housemaid, how will you have her blessings? How will you be of one flesh receiving the blessings that you ought to receive as one flesh or as a family? So we are told that um, the woman in her sphere is not inferior. And the man who goes outside must understand as he is laboring outside and getting the applause of men, here is a woman not receiving applause. And the best you can do is appreciate her and share with her your salary so that she may use it the way she wants. Not say that this is food and count that you have given her money. It is your duty to provide food. It is your duty to provide the housing. It is your duty to provide clothes but also it's your duty to share your salary with uh, your wife. And I hope that um, that, that one sinks in well. 
And so uh, I repeat this, do you perceive the bearing of my illustration upon the question of a woman's fear? It shows you that your sex is not necessarily inferior to the other because it is called by God and nature to act in a different sphere. Your exclusion from the stage of public life does not imply your inferiority. Only the diversity of your powers, functions, and duties. Indeed, it will defy the loftiest powers to show in the work, the mission of the sphere of woman is a weight beneath that of a more bustling and prominent companion man. What is the sphere of a woman then? home the social circle what is her mission to mold character to fashion herself and others after the model character of christ what are her chief instruments for the accomplishment of her great work the affections from who from the husband love is the one by which she is to work moral transformation within her fairy circle gentleness sweetness loveliness and purity are the elements of her power her place is not on life's great battlefields. Man belongs there. It is for him to go forth armed for it is conflict and struggles, to do fierce battle with the hosts of, e hosts of evil that uh, throng our earth and tremble upon its blessing. But woman must abide in the peaceful sanctuaries of home and walk in the noiseless vales, vales of private life. There she must dwell beside the secret springs of public virtue. There she must smile upon the father, the brother, the husband. So the man occupies three offices at home. She is the father. He is the father, I mean. He is a brother and he is the husband. See how these things start. And uh, you I was not really confused when she wrote this. And uh, I'll talk about father, brother, and husband. In a, uh, why does uh, E.G. White talk of uh, the husband first being a father and then a brother? And then the last position of a man in the household is a husband. But a man who is married, the first position in his home before even he gets children is a father. In which way? You went and took a lady from a family. And she has left the parents and she has enjoined you as a stranger. And you know that um, in uh, ancient Near East or the ancient Hebrew culture, if uh, a stranger came to visit you, you had to protect that stranger with your own life. If maybe peradventure uh, people came to attack the house, they have to have you dead first before they reach this strange. Read well the Bible and you'll see that. And so you have taken this woman, <clears throat> this lady from her household, and she has come as a stranger in your family because she didn't grow there. She is meeting new faces, new village, new habits, and new everything. And so the best, first of all, you can pr provide for her is uh, the environment of a father. She left the father and now you have become the father. That is why E.G. White starts that the husband, this man in his home, first of all, he is a father. Whether you have children or you don't have them, you are a father to your wife because he has, she has left the father. The next thing, this lady came from a family setup and in that family setup, she had brothers and sisters. And because you are a man, you are to act as a brother to this lady who has become your wife because um, you look at the sons of uh, Jacob, although they, what they did was not good when uh, their sister Dina was defiled, but uh, you can see the jealousy in which the brothers protect their sister. And this is the same kind of jealousy you should protect this woman as the brothers protected her. And so you play the role of a father, make sure, making sure that the daughter is okay. Secondly, you play in the role of a, a brother, making sure that she is secured. And thirdly, which is uh, which should be the top, but it is placed in the third, that um, you are what you are now, the husband. And that means that uh, playing the role of making sure that um, you are in the shoes of Christ as the priest of the home, making sure that uh, 
everything is running according to the will of God. And uh, we are told that um, marriage is an evangelistic field. In which way? Christ left the Father to come to evangelize the church so as to be married to her when she is pure. So as you are standing as a husband and the priest of the home, your duty is to evangelize this lady so that she may make it to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And uh, I think that those are good thoughts on, on, on that. Um, uh, and it is the will of God. So there she must, at home there, she must smile upon the father, the brother, and the husband when returning home when returning like warriors from the fight, exhausted and covered with the dust of strife, they need to be refreshed by sweet waters drawn from the affections of the spring and cheered and renewed struggle, and cheered to renewed struggle by the music of her voice. There she must rear the Christian patriot and statesman. The work of the wife is to bring up Christian patriotic statesmen the self-denying philanthropist and the obedient citizen. Her sons, her daughters have to be obedient citizens of not only the present world, but the coming world. The husband has to be a patriot and a statesman. The woman, it is her duty to make this husband a patriot and a statesman and her children to be citizens, not of only this world, but the world to come. What an awful, what an unmatched work that the woman is being called to as a home missionary. There in a word, she must form the character of the world. Now, uh, I love what certain preacher said that um, he was talking about the people who just sold for the offices in this world, and he was saying that um, what do people crave for being presidents of the world? There are people who choose presidents in this world. And they see the work of the president being the most smallest job in the face of the earth. Because being a president of the world, you are just a puppet of uh, the people who run the country. You know that many businessmen run the countries that they are in. And uh, they can decide today you are a president, tomorrow you are not a president. Because their business have to be kept uh, running and uh, without taxes and all that stuff that is a story of another day how it operates uh, I, I remember i did uh, uh, a presentation on uh, financial affairs of this world and uh, how the business may cause this elects president and causes inflation and recession but leave alone that he was talking about how many how men crave for this small job now look at the work of a woman and tell me is there a greater work than this that in her home missionary work, she must form the character of the world. Now, you just find a few men, businessmen controlling the world, but we are told that women can control the whole world by how they act as a home missionary. And it may be either for good or for bad. We read the story of... Uh, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, Bonaparte in, uh, in, the, in the in the in child guidance where we are told that uh, when she, he was growing up, the mother and uh, the men that uh, surrounded him could uh, make small planes and put before uh, him or uh, and put uh, besides him and also take uh, uh, armies and put him in front to lead them to a war and that is how Napoleon Bonaparte actually became uh, a fighter and a warrior. And uh, Sister White was, was saying that um, when uh, the time will come for the execution of the judgment, the mother will behold what she trained the little child to be in the future and how he, read, he shed a lot of blood. Now think about this, how Napoleon Bonaparte ruled the world. And think here of a mother of uh, Daniel who shaped Babylon and the mother of Cyrus, or the mother of Nehemiah, or the, the, these great mothers who in their children influence the world. Think of uh, the mother of John the Baptist, who we are told in Desire of Ages, when John the Baptist stood up to preach, the whole kingdom of Satan trembled. So we are told the mother as a home missionary can change the world how it looks like and can make the 
the, 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 the empire of uh, Satan tremble when this, the, the children of the husband stands up to preach. This is the, the unmatched work of a mother in her home sphere. We are not talking about a mother living at home, but just using that sphere to make sure that things are running in this world that the way she would like them to run. And so there in, a, there, in a word, she must form the character of the world and determine the destiny of her race. How awful is her mission? What dread responsibility attaches to her work? Surely she is not degraded by feeling such as fear, nor will she be elevated if forsaking it, she should go forth into the highways of society and jostle with her brothers for the offices and honors of public life. Fame she might occasionally gain, but it will be at the price of her womanly influence. Health for Reformer, July 1, 1893, paragraph 15. Now, Continued on, she says, find yourself out at the sea in a noble ship contended with furious storm. Beneath is one wild wall of foaming surges. Above the array of lightnings like the swords of cherubim, wide brandish to repel aggression from heaven's gates. Behold, amidst this scene of grandeur, the stormy petrel, this bird gliding up the face of a huge wave darting above the form of a breaker or sweeping along the water valleys as compositely as and as natural as it ever swept over the same sea in an hour of calm. So amidst these raging storms and lightning, we have the petrel gliding as if nothing is happening. Behold to another bird, whirling and darting above the spray with a cry of seeming despair now flying before a monster sea and unknown struggling to keep it is wet and weary wings from folding into helpless inaction. Tell me, lady, why this little trembler, the second bird, is in so pitiful plight while this, uh, while this stormy petrel actually is just calm in the storm? Why is this? You cannot answer. Then listen. The petrel is in its appropriate sphere. The little trembler is a land bird, tempted at first by sunny weather to wander among the islands and driven at last by a strong wind to sea. He is out of his sphere, and hand his quiet has fled, his song is silenced, and his life endangered. God made him for the land. The trembler is made for the land, but the petrel is made for the sea. The grove is his home and his fear is among the flowers. This, this uh, 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 but the trembler. It is thus with the entire creation. Everything has its appointed sphere within which alone it can flourish. A woman as a home missionary and men as a field missionary. Men and women have theirs. They are not exceptions to this truth, but examples of it. To be happy and prosperous, they must abide in them. Man is fitted for the storms of public life and like the petrel can be happy amid their rudest surges. Woman is formed for the calm of home. She may venture like the land bird to invade the sphere of man, but she will encounter storms which she, utter, she is utterly unfitted to meet. Happiness will forsake her breast, her own sex will despise her, men will be unable to love her, and when she dies, she will feel an honored grave. And so, just re-agitating what we have been learning as we bring this to a close. Mother is God's agent to Christianize the family. Mother is a home missionary. No work is greater or holier than the mother's work. Her work is of the most solemn importance. She is the greatest missionary in the world. God does not call mothers away from home. Home missionary is her God-given work. She should serve God by doing common duties at home with the heavenly spirit. The sitting room is an index of a pious Christian lady. She is a candidate of heaven if Christ find her in the common labor of home missionary. There is a high moral importance in the humble task of a mother at home just as the work of Angel Gabriel in the field. This uh, I saw it as uh, amazing and fascinating. She is excluded from the compact field, yet her work not inferior, but greater than that of her husband in the field. Her work is to smile to her husband, brother, and father. And you see, I have interchanged this, which I should not have. It is father, brother, then husband uh, to her children when he comes back. This is well 
make forget all the troubles of the day. At the peaceful sanctuary of home, she forms and shapes the character of the nation and determines the destiny of her race. Her joy and happiness is swept away like the little trembler bird if she seeks to occupy a sphere God has not assigned her. Now, when uh, what an incredible, awful mission for a married woman. No work in the world, president, bishop, pope, or prophet can match her work. Yet how pathetic anyone should aim solo to venture into a sphere not belonging to them. No wonder. This is what the Bible say, 1 Timothy, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefulness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. 15, which is the most important verse, leave alone these issues that people really argue about. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Do you see how a woman will be saved? Through what childbearing? I'm not saying giving as birth to as many children as possible. Childbearing means being a home missionary. The reason why maybe people joke a lot about marriage is lack of understanding that it is part of the third angel's message. Probation is soon closing upon us and plagues are to follow. If there was an institution which is to be restored on earth, is family ties because it is in this that the larger eternal family is made. And um, uh, I want to bring it to an end here, but uh, I want to read this as we close this, and this is where I will uh, start that um, uh, in Child Guidance page uh, uh, 558.1, that uh, parenting that is home missionary is part of the third angel's message. You thought that um, as women sit home, taking care of the children, that they are not doing the third angel's message. No. Parenting, being a home missionary, is part of the third angel's message. And uh, I want you to see this. Uh, because people think that this is just a job that can be degraded, that a woman is a housewife. No. The special work of parents is to make the laws of God plain to their children and to urge their obedience to them, that they may see the importance of obeying God all the days of their life. This was the work of Moses. He was to enjoin upon parents their duty to give to their children an example of strict obedience. And this is the work that above everything else must be done in the home life today. It is to accompany the third angel's message. Parenting, proper parenting, home missionary work is part of the third angel's message because we saw that mothers are to Christianize First of all, a family, then a neighborhood, then a nation. And we were told they are to Christianize the whole world. As they work in the home sphere, not in the missionary field, they are to prepare their husbands and their children to go outside there and, bring, and uh, preach the third angel's message. And as they do that, they themselves are demonstrating that they are actively involved in the third angel's message. And so uh, I pray that uh, the husbands may give their wives a humble time to do this work. And I'm praying that the women may start understanding what it means to be a housewife. It is not just sitting there and waiting for your husband to bring home money and all that stuff. You are like a farmer who is preparing the ground so that the plants may be planted on it and sprout. The mother prepares a home where angels can come and give the husband a message to go to the world and evangelize the world. What a very important work that if the environment is not found fit, your husband may be passed by in the message given to others. And so where we have failed as men, God forgive us. Where women have failed, thinking that the title housewife degrades them, let them awake and know that this means more important than doing a work of a housemaid, but um, preparing the whole world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so may the Lord bless us and uh, have a blessed Sabbath and contemplate upon these things. Shall we pray? Our dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for uh, the message of this time. The Lord, it may accompany the third angel's message as uh, people work in their own spheres. 
cheerfully doing their work as if they were doing to you Christ uh, uh, directly. So have mercy upon us where we have failed in our lives as uh, home missionaries and uh, the missionaries of the field. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.